And at this time, we're going to have a call to worship. I might have missed something that I intended to tell you, but uh, if, if I think of it later, then I'll reveal it to you at that time. Yes, so repeat after me, please. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight. Be accepted in thy sight. O Lord, O Lord, my rock, my rock, and my redeemer. Is there anyone to make a confession this morning? Is there anyone to make a confession? Thank you. Amen. All right. All right. We had two to make confessions, and at the appropriate time, we will uh, pray for them and make the next prayer. All right. At this time, my son Lee will come forward and begin to sing. 39 in the supplementary book. 39 in the supplementary book. Bottom. 39. Oh, that is let's see. I still have joy. I still have joy. After all the things I did, Lord, I still have still have joy. Still have joy.
Mama told me, take the Lord. When I was young, take the Lord. Christian journey, take the Lord. be hard to run. Take the Lord. Keep your hand take the Lord. in Jesus' hand, take the Lord. and He'll lead you a better place. And you'll be built, and you'll be strong. Talk about as soon as you're born. Serious pain, 
And we just pray to you, bless her, relieve her of that pain. We pray for the well-being of Sister, Sister Townsend, Sister Brewster, Brother and Sister Walker, and Sister Beeson, who just recently uh, dismissed from the hospital. We pray that she will continue to do well. And just pray that all will be well with her. Bless those who help take part in her care. We come this morning asking a blessing upon the individuals that stood, Brother Cal and Sister Woody, who stood and made confession this morning. We pray that you will help them or strengthen them where they need to be strengthened. Yes, we just pray that you will help us all to strive to be better servants. Yes. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will help us to refrain from doing the things that you have commanded us not to do. And we'll be, be doers of your word, Father, for we know that we're all sin and fall short. And we just pray that you will help us to have less and less incidents. And we just pray, Heavenly Father, that you will be with this congregation as we try to work together to take your word to those who are in darkness. Yeah. And we just ask forgiveness of our sins, Heavenly Father, when we fail to do the things that we ought to do. And we just ask you this morning, Heavenly Father, to bless this country, uh, a country that seems to be in turmoil in so many, so many times. But we just pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help us to have a greater love one for another. Yeah. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that individuals uh, focus more on you and less on themselves. Amen. And we just pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless those who are in leadership position this morning. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you always have your country's best interest at heart and, and, and lay aside their own concerns. Or they look, not try to satisfy men, but please you, Father. Amen. And we just come at this time asking a blessing upon this, those who participated in the worship service. We, Pray that all the things to say and do will be pleasing and acceptable unto you. And we pray that you will help us to always treat one another with dignity and respect. Yes. Forgive us of our sins, and when life here is over, yes. a home in heaven will await us. It's in your Son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
to save it. Oh, to his hand, to God's how much I've missed being in fellowship with you in a physical standpoint. So we thank God, as our elders have already said, for allowing us to be in this assembly once again. But we also thank him for bringing us through the pandemic. I, I, I stopped keeping track of all the deaths, but I remember it was over 500,000 at one time, and so that's a lot of people. Think about that. You know, that's over, you know, 20 Gadsden's, if you think about it. Right. And so that easily could have wiped all of us out. But Amen. God saw fit for us to continue. Amen. I want to celebrate, first and foremost, not only us being together, but for the simple fact that we have our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. who suffered, died, and rose again. So all of us may have a chance at eternal life. I also want to celebrate you today. As we were going through the parking lot service for over a year, you didn't let nothing stop you from worshiping God in spirit and in truth. So I believe somebody needs to say something about that. Amen. When somebody stays faithful through something that could have eliminated us because you actually love God more than even life itself. So thank you for showing that you do. Thank you for being that Romans 12 verse 1 Christian that Paul always talked about where he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a what, church? Your reasonable service. It makes sense, and it definitely makes absolute, utter sense to serve Jesus for everything that he has done for all of us. So how many of y'all are glad to be here today? Amen. I know I am. I also celebrate the fact, and she's, I, I'm going to make sure I say it, this will be in September my 20th wedding anniversary. So I celebrate that for sure. Because if, you know, not, if you're not married, you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen, somebody. That means not everybody getting the 20 years. Some of y'all not getting the 20 days, but I'm not going to say nothing <laughs> about that. So we are glad that God brought us all this far. But also, you know, I'm going to get to the word of God here today. But like I said, I'm full and I want to celebrate you all. I thank God for our two wonderful elders that have done a wonderful job in leading us all these years, I think since 2014, if I haven't uh, I made a mistake on the year. And of course, when you're looking at their work here today, you see that, you see the, uh, I say the aesthetics and the acoustics are wonderful here today. You know, meaning that they all the new paint and all the renovations to the building, they have really made a major difference. They made one more difference, y'all. I hope you can smile about it because I'm, I'm talking about myself here today. When you see me stand here, I didn't grow six inches. <laughs> you probably don't figure out what I'm talking about here. What I mean by that, they shrunk the pool pit down <laughs> about six inches. So now I feel like a big man now. So I feel all right here today. So I am enthused. I am excited that this big old pool pit is not swallowing me up anymore. And so they thought, think, of course, you know, we have that kind of relationship. They laughed at me first because they kind of lose me up here. But then they thought about me and said, hey, bring this thing down. This man is under six foot. This thing is almost six foot. So I can barely see over the thing. So they did a good job at lowering it so I can use it here today. So I thank God for that. And I thank God for the ability for all his brothers and sisters before we can get started in worship to be able to laugh with each other. And we do that quite often. That just means we enjoy each other's time. And I believe that if the good Lord sees fit for us to continue on, that's going to continue. We're going to get our nutritional engineers back on the job, too. Y'all all right with that? So we can really have that good fellowship, huh? A little grease on our mouths. Y'all too sophisticated for that kind of talk here today, huh? Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about here. The wonderful food that they prepare for us. But more than that, bring us together in order to fellowship like the first century church uh, told us to do. 
But I want to go ahead and get into the word of God here. And I want to take you back to 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 58. So again, this uh, epistle, which means letter, was originally written to the Church of Christ that met in Corinth. And Corinth is in modern-day Greece. But of course, this letter was not limited to those in Greece at that time, but it's also given to us. And will stand even until the point when Jesus comes back again. But I want to use it this morning as a source of encouragement, a source of enlightenment, and as well as a source of revelation for all of us to stay strong in the Christian faith. That's one reason I was saying to you earlier, I celebrate that you stay steady in Christ. And I want you to think about that word steady as we go through. We talked about it last week, and we're going to complete the lesson today entitled The Steady Walk in Christ. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Let me reread it out of King James Version that says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Somebody say to yourself, thank God my labor is not in vain in the Lord. So again, we're talking about the steady walk in Christ. Now, I get to that age where I'm getting become, becoming, that is, middle age. I'm 46 years old, so maybe I'm going through that midlife crisis that people talk about all the time. If you know what I'm talking about, a lot of times when we get this age, we get a little more hair in our brush or in our comb. <laughs> you ain't get that. <laughs> than we had before. If we're able to grow hair on our face, it goes into that salt and pepper mode. Mm -hmm. And then eventually to either white or gray. I joke with Brother Terry all the time, mine don't know what it wants to do. <laughs> okay, it don't know if it wants to be gray or if it wants to be black. But every day I see more and more gray coming in there. Mm -hmm. So eventually I believe that as long as my comb keeps bringing me out this hair, that eventually I'm not going to have all this stuff up here. Mm -hmm. So eventually you're going to see my head shining. At some point in life. But that's just part of the natural process. Amen. It's good to be bald. Is that all right, y'all? It's good to be great. It's good to be able to get around even if you got to do a little bit slower Amen. than you used to. Hopefully that means that you're growing in wisdom even though the body is going back to where it originated, of course, back to the dust. But I say all that to say that in, in designing this message this morning through my studies of God's word, it really brought me down memory lane. Some of us can remember when we were young, when we could do whatever we wanted to do. Do y'all remember the days where you could stay up all night and still go to work in the morning? Oh, amen, somebody. If I stay up past 10 o'clock, I'm not going to work tomorrow. I'm going to tell you that right now because my body just cannot take it. And so when, what happened when I was going through this message, I was thinking back 30 years ago. And I was thinking about the days when I was a halfway decent basketball player. And a halfway decent track runner. You know, basketball, of course, was my favorite sport of that time. And I used uh, track as my off-season sport. In other words, to get quicker, to get more muscle, and to have a little bit more endurance in preparation for basketball season to come. However, what I found out is that everybody's not good at everything. Oh, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like people talk about a jack of all trade, but a master what? No. Of none. And so, you know, in those days, just because you can play a little basketball, run a little track, you think you can do everything else under the sun. I was wrong. I found out that when you put a tennis racket in my hand, you might have just cut off my arms. What I mean by that is I found out that I didn't have the hand-eye coordination in order to be a good tennis player. It's a whole different discipline than basketball and track was. I probably was the worst tennis player in all of school. And I don't know if it's my coach's bad sense of humor, but I remember when we were in 10th grade and uh, on the junior varsity basketball team, every year we would go to a basketball camp at a major university back in my home state of Michigan. And that, that year back in, I believe it was about 1991, 92, somewhere in there, uh, we went to Eastern Michigan University. And one of the drills they did, I don't know if it was a bad sense of humor again of my coach or uh, he just wanted to see us torture. But he put all 12 of us in our line, and then a lady came out. Now, what, what, what are you going to do with this drill? 
Unfortunately, if you don't remember this now, you know, people are into other things today, but you remember back in the 80s and 90s, everybody was doing aerobics. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm talking about. The leotards and the leg warmers, the big hair. Y'all ain't come from that era if you don't know what I'm talking about, about here today. But the lady came out and all of a sudden, all 12 of us had to do aerobics. Now, that was the worst group of men that you could have been, including myself. I'm not taking myself out of the story because we were bumping each other. We were kicking off key. Oh, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. It was the worst thing I ever seen. I believe that when we went back into the locker room, the aerobics instructor, she probably had the time of her life just laughing at us, saying that this was the most uncoordinated and clumsy group of men that she had ever seen. So obviously then, you can see that basketball and training and conditioning for that doesn't always transfer into aerobics. And again, I'm sure she had a good time talking about us after we went back to the locker room. And lastly, our gym class had the bright idea of making all of us do gymnastics. Now, think about that. If you don't coordinate aerobics, what are you going to be in gymnastics? And I remember, absolutely, uncoordinated to the max. And what I remember is that if you remember the balance beam, anybody try to get on the balance beam before? It's hard enough to just try to walk on the balance beam. But then you're trying to do these flips and dismounts and all that kind of stuff. You can hurt yourself pretty seriously and pretty quickly on the balance beam. So I found out very quickly I was not built for the balance beam. I was not coordinated for the balance beam. And once gym was over, I wasn't getting on the balance beam anymore. Oh, amen, somebody. When you're more on the ground than you're on the balance beam, that's telling you something. You need to make a career change. And of course, absolutely, balance beam wasn't for me. So I can just say it probably would have been easier to swallow fire than to stay on top of that balance beam for my coordination at the time. So it was an ugly sight to see at the last. And this is why I respect our great Olympic gymnasts who make the balance beam work look so effortless. These ladies are some great athletes. Mm -hmm. They are graceful. We should give them a lot of applause for if you've ever been, been through it yourself for what they really can do and how they can make it so easy. And so I looked up on YouTube the other day to see some of the best techniques that would help somebody stay on the balance beam if you're concentrating on gymnastics. So the young lady was demonstrating how to do different jumps, so she obviously was no beginner, you know, even though I'm a novice looking at what she was doing. What I did not realize is that one tip that she put out there, I wish I'd have known 30 years ago, was to keep one foot in front of the other while you're still on the balance beam. And that'll always give you the ability to keep from losing your balance. You know, just a little bit of common sense. And the young lady also mentioned stretch, stressing, I mean, excuse me, stretching and constantly training your legs for strength and flexibility so they'll be ready for you when called upon. Now, moving on, I see some similarities here. As you know me by now, you know I'm not really talking about gymnastics. Mm. I'm talking about symbolism for the Christian life. So there's symbolism between the balance beam video that I was able to see and living the Christian life. And see, for example, the balance beam, I want you to keep this in your mind. The balance beam, symbolically speaking, as we talk through this lesson here today, is the Christian life itself. For example, uh, this means that, as the young lady said, we must prepare for this athletic uh, uh, event. This means that we got to stretch before we begin. You see, stretching is used in sports to make sure the muscles are ready for the trauma we're about to put them through. See, that way we do not tear up and we cannot continue our careers due to an injury to our body. So this means that we spiritually must stretch out and prepare for each day as a Christian. Are oh, y'all still with me here today? Amen. See, sometimes when you get in the morning, I'm talking about stretching spiritually. You're raising your hands and you're, you're trying to get yourself right. You tell yourself each day, I'm not going to let anger get the best of me here today. Anybody stretch out? And tell you this to yourself today. I'm not going to let anger get the best of me today. As you can see, you're stretching the mind. So when that moment comes, your brain is ready to perform successfully for the Lord. Oh, amen, somebody. Maybe you don't see what I'm talking about here today. But if you're out of shape like I am. And I remember just going back in the weight room after years of not being in shape. You know what I did after, after, after I got done lifting weights, don't you? I laid down. <laughs> Because I hurt myself. Oh, amen, somebody. 
And I did everything I could not to cry in front of my wife. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. And so I did turn to a, the biggest baby as you could with dry eyes. Amen, somebody. And so what I ended up doing, I had to lay down on the bed and say, baby, you have to help me tonight. Oh, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. You ain't married yet. If you don't know what I'm talking about, so she had to rub my back down and all that kind of stuff. But why did I have to go through that? Because what? I wasn't ready. To get back into doing what I was doing before. Well, amen, somebody. I was supposed to, what, ease myself back into it. But then I'm going to try to go in here and put the weights I had on it before. Oh, amen, somebody. No common sense at all. Do as many reps as I used to do. Amen, somebody. That just means I had to lay down longer amen. than I used to do. Amen, somebody. Get some baby in until I get that back spasm to go away. But see, folks, that's because why? I didn't stretch out. I didn't prepare myself for that day. And so you have to do the same thing. Remember, I'm uh, repeating myself on person, purpose. you got to tell yourself each day, this is your spiritual stretching. I'm not going to let anger get the best of me today. You're stretching your mind so you're ready for the, when that event comes. Remember, God has said, be ye angry in what, church? And sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 26. So remember, you must keep stretching in order to be effective. In addition, you must prepare your mind each day to say, I will not allow my joy to be taken from me today, no matter what. Oh, amen, somebody. That's why I appreciate Brother Perry all the time. If you notice, he always gets up and tells us, smile, before we get into it. Amen, somebody. I hope you're smiling. I can't see you now because you're masked. But hopefully you're smiling right now. Because why are you going to come in here with a long face? Huh? Why are you going to come in here and bring everybody else down? Because you've got to realize that the attitude you walk in the door with is the attitude you're going to work with. Work, I worship with. Oh, amen, somebody. If you got an attitude, you're going to have an attitude when you sing. Oh, amen. So I hope God has a sense of humor. Because you might have an attitude when you sing, oh, oh how I love Jesus. He's sitting down there looking at you, you, you show him. <laughs> huh? You see, because why? What did God say? John 4, 24. Y'all know where I'm going with this? That God is a spirit. And they what? Worship him. Must worship him how, church? In spirit? You know, I stop right there. Because spirit means what? On the inside of you. Before you can even worship in truth, you got to worship spiritually. Meaning from the inside, what? Ouch. So you come with your own enthusiasm. Huh? You come with your own joy. And you come with your own positivity. Because then you can enjoy worship the way that it was designed to be worship. Oh, I hope I'm talking to somebody here today. So again, not only that, let's get back to what we're talking about directly. You must prepare your mind each day to say, I will not allow my joy to be taken from me today no matter what. See, folks, don't forget God has said in John chapter 16. Verse number 33, he said, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. Oh, Jesus didn't say he's going to shield us from the things we go through. He said, you're going to have some issues as long as you live in this earth. You're going to have some troubles. You're going to have some hard times. But look what he said first. He said, before even that, he said, in me you'll have what? You will have peace. So if you're living a Christian life, it don't matter what's going on in your life because you can supersede these things because of the power of Christ that's put in you. Huh? What did he say? In Philippians 4 verse 13, what he said, I can do all things through what? Christ. That's strengthening me. You see, when it's John chapter 16 verse 33, let me finish that scripture off. It says, these things I have spoken unto you, that in, ye, that in me ye might have, might, you might have peace. In the world you should have tribulation. But then he goes back and mends us back up. He says, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Oh, amen, somebody. Somebody ought to be saying in your own heart right now, thank God I serve an overcomer. Oh, amen, somebody. Thank God I serve a winner. Thank God I serve a victor. Because that means since he wins, I win. Oh, amen, somebody. Since he has cleared the way, I can walk right behind him to success. Oh, amen, somebody. Since he is on the top of the mountain, he's already got his arm reached out so he can pull me up too. Amen. Oh, amen, somebody. That's the God I serve. Yeah. And I hope that's the God you serve as well. Remember, folks, 
Your emotions, when they're negative, can cause you to lose focus and take your eyes off the balance beam that we're using as symbolism for the Christian life. You see, you will certainly fall off the balance beam of the Christian life, which is symbolism from, for sin, if you allow your emotions to distract you from the task at hand, which is to stay on the balance beam without slipping off of it. Oh, amen. Somebody, y'all help me out a little bit here today. Somebody ought to be saying right now, I'm going to stay on the balance beam. Amen. Oh, amen, somebody. You see, folks, moving forward, don't forget the young gymnast advice. What we learn regarding how to keep our balance when moving along the balance beam, where we're told to keep one foot down at all times. This is similar to saying to us spiritually, always stay connected to the Lord at all times. This means to keep our lives centered on and remain balanced in Christ by not living in hypocrisy. Oh, amen, somebody. I want you to help me like you did last time. Tell the devil right now, get the packet. Amen, somebody. Amen. See, this means to keep our lives centered on and remain in balance in Christ by, again, living sincerity in sincerity without hypocrisy. Unfortunately, some of the Lord's church want to live a double life. Oh, amen. Somebody got somebody ought to be saying, God have mercy. You see, unfortunately, they do not understand the damage they do to their own reputation. They don't understand the damage they do to the reputation of the church. And they don't understand the damage they do, most of all, to the name of Jesus Christ. See, all hypocrisy, folks, it smears the name of God. And it makes it harder to draw unbelievers to a true faith in Jesus for their salvation. In other words, our hypocrisy will drive people away from instead of to Jesus Christ. So we must keep our foot down. Oh, somebody ought to say again, I'm keeping my foot down. You see, we must keep our foot down when we make moves in this life. And this will always keep us connected to the beam and not falling to the embarrassment of falling off the beam, causing the church's embarrassment and keeping shame from falling on the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, folks, if you don't know this by now, the world mocks us. Oh, amen, somebody. Amen. The world laughs at us. And whenever we fall, they are quick to say, I told you so. When we fall off the beam, which means we live in hypocrisy. Folks, let me give you something to, to, to ponder right now. Why give them the satisfaction? Let's let them see the light within us instead, which means the Jesus that's truly in our hearts by the way we behave publicly and privately. In doing so, we fulfill Christ's commandment to us that says in Matthew 5, verse 15 to verse number 17, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a what church? On a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that, er, that are in the house. Jesus says, and more properly known in verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your what, church? Yes. Good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5, verse 15 and 17. Lastly, let's remember the last piece of advice, symbolically speaking, from a young gymnast who said one must be flexible to be successful on the balance beam. This is good advice for the Christian life. That is, we must realize that we must have a flexible attitude toward life. Folks, if you don't know this by now, change is going to come. Amen. Oh, amen. Just keep living. Change is going to come. Friends will come and they will go. Our finance may be great one day and not so great the next day. Amen. Oh, how I many of y'all in the next day right now? Oh, amen, somebody. You see, our finances... May be on the mountaintop, but it can easily be in the valley. Amen. Not a day later, but a few hours Amen. later. You see, our health may be very prosperous one moment and change rapidly downward within the same day. Amen. Oh, amen, somebody. Oh, amen. I hope I, my family can take this as a compliment. I uh, thank you guys for your for your prayers uh, and me losing my uh, uncle just a couple weeks ago and my aunt last week. Great aunt. But, you know, back in the day, my Uncle Robert was one of those guys that would just big for nothing. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. See, you know, you can't, don't judge my family by the way I look. <laughs> what I mean by that, I'm the rush of the family. Amen. Don't say amen on that. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm just picking with you. He knows. We have that relationship. We can do that to each other. 
But in my generation, including my uncles and all the men in my age group, I don't have a cousin under six foot one. Yes, I do. I got you. I'm five eight. <laughs> and I was the athlete. They were the athlete. Don't lay no six. But, but nonetheless, I, I said this about my uncle. I miss him dearly. Great guy. Great artistic person. But, you know, looking at how he was built in stacks, you never think he'd die. Huh? Because my uncle was 6'2", and naturally about 240 without an ounce of facts on him. Oh, amen, somebody. But God has said what? When you go back to the Psalms, it said what? Our years are what? Three score and ten. And by strength, what? Might make any. Amen, somebody. So that means no matter how big and strong you may be, no matter how much uh, character you eat, y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Uh, no matter how healthy you may be as far as your lifestyle, there's a day where God is going to save your soul. It's required of you. Oh, amen, somebody. Amen. There's a day where we're going to have to close our eyes for the last time. There's a day where we're no, no longer going to be able to expand our chest and, and air goes in and out of our nostrils and our lungs. There's a day when this is going to come to an end. Oh, amen, somebody. So change is going to come. So the thing is, are you ready for that change? Huh? That's why you have to keep a flexible attitude about life. Things are not going to remain the same each day of your life. That's one reason why we as husbands, we cannot be so busy not to spend time with our wives. Oh, amen, somebody. I never understood it until recently. You know, my, one of my wife's traditions is, is that before we leave the house, we got to kiss each other. And sometimes us as men are like, oh, what you doing? I'm doing something else. But then you get the older generation start talking to you and say, yeah, and, I, and I believe uh, Brother Umpong, if you remember Brother Umpong from Nigeria, used to come. I remember uh, when I first came back from Nigeria back in 2019, and uh, my wife had surprised me and took the day off. And I'm sitting there trying to eat with them. We're in Montgomery, so, you know, about two hours from home. And he looked at me and said, you know, in so many words, she's at home. She's at home. What are you doing here? Uh, you know, you get what I'm saying? He said, she's at home. What are you doing here? Then all the other sisters that was around, she said, she missed you. You've been gone two weeks. Because I'm sitting there dumbfounded like, a you know, a deer in the head. Like, like I didn't know she was going to take a day off. No, I'm just getting back from the airport. Amen, somebody. So I'm taking my time getting home. And Brother Umpong with his, his very raspy voice, you know, he passed on about two years ago, one of my heroes in the faith. Uh, he said, I don't know what's wrong with you young people. <laughs> Y'all remember how his voice out. And then, and then all of a sudden, he's like, you better leave. And so many words looking at me like, you know what I'm talking about. And then you go back into that little shell like you six years old. You know what I mean? Like your granddaddy talking to you. And you're like, okay, yes, sir. Oh, amen, something. I'm grown as grown can be, but when he was talking, I'm going, what? Back down. Oh, y'all, y'all must not be from that generation. We respected our elders. Amen, amen somebody. You didn't talk back to your elders. Amen, because your elder can get you. And then when you got home, your mama might get you. And if daddy was mad enough, he got you too. Oh, amen. Y'all don't know. Nothing about that life here today. I think that's why some of us came out a little bit better. Amen, somebody. We're not in jail or anybody's grave right now because why? Somebody was willing to discipline us as we came up. But let me get back on track here as we shortly come to a close, folks. You see, again, we must make our faith flexible enough to change with the times in which we live in. This means that our faith must be ready for change and increase by each passing day so that when hardships come, we do not stray away from God. Oh, amen, somebody say in your own heart, I ain't going nowhere. Oh, amen, somebody. If you too bougie to say it, say it this way. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> oh, amen, somebody. See, in other words, do not fall off the balance beam of the Christian life. Remember the internal words of Jesus taken from Revelation 2, verse number 10, that says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown, what? 
of life. Oh, amen, somebody. Aren't you glad that a crown is waiting for you? Remember, in order to have a winning score in the Olympic Games, you must, coming off the balance beam, you must dismount properly. See, many of our Olympic ladies come off the balance beam in a dramatic and acrobatic fashion that somehow come to perfect landings on their feet. You see, well, they're often met with loud cheers from the crowd, and the best, in the best cases, they get a perfect score of 10. If you stay faithful, even if you have slipped off the balance beam of the Christian life a few times in your life, but, but got back on it, when you dismount, God is going to give you the perfect 10 express, not in numbers, but in praise for you. See, after your final dismount called death, you will land on your feet. And here Jesus said in Matthew 25, verse number 21, at the judgment seat, he said, well done, what? Thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Here's what you want to hear, what? Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. With that being said, the message is yours. But I want to ask you, do you believe what has been said to you here today? Hmm? Are you willing to stay on the balanced beam of life? I'm talking about the Christian life. If you notice something else about the balanced beam, the balanced beam is narrow. Amen, somebody. And the balanced beam is also what? Straight. In other words, you got to stay on the narrow path of righteousness, right? Amen. And you got to look straight on to heaven and straight on to Jesus as your what? Your Lord and your Savior. And you got to keep him there all of your days. Amen, somebody. Amen. That's why I'm excited this morning. That's why I'm so glad I'm patting you on the back virtually here today. Because even through the pandemic, you stayed with Jesus. Amen. Oh, amen, somebody. Amen. Even though you've been through other things that even were more detrimental than corona in your life, you what? You stayed with Jesus. Amen, somebody. Even though you had some trauma and dramatic experiences in your life, you stayed with Jesus. Amen. Because that's the only way you're going to make it to heaven. Y'all know what the Bible testifies in and of itself. In Acts chapter 4, verse number 12, and John chapter 14, verse number 6, that Jesus is the only way unto heaven. There is no other option but to make Christ the head of your life and keep him there in order for you to dismount properly. What I mean by that is the way. Make it unto heaven. Amen, somebody. And get that perfect tent of judgment from Jesus. Again, aren't you waiting to hear those words? Well done, thou good faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the Lord. Stay on the beam and you'll make it there. But nonetheless, if you do not do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or you have not done it right, I'm going to go there this morning. Is that all right, y'all? You can't be taught wrong and saved right. right. Oh, amen, somebody. If you have got a corrupt word, you have not been saved. Because there's no such thing as a corrupt salvation. Amen. Amen, somebody. If you have been told that you can pray your way into heaven, corruption, Amen. corrupt salvation, meaning no salvation. Amen, somebody. Amen. If you have been told that you have been saved before you were baptized, corrupt preaching, Amen. corrupt word, no salvation. Oh, amen, somebody. If you have been told that all you have to do is take Jesus in your heart, mm. corruptness, lie, deception, because that's not in the Bible. And if it's in the, not in the Bible, then it won't save nobody. Huh? What? That's the truth. Are you saying that uh, hundreds of thousands of people are wrong today? Yes. Huh? Are you saying that all the stuff that we see on TV that's so popular today, that's making billions of dollars, is wrong? Yes. Amen. Yes, it is. Because there's only one word, one church, one Lord, one baptism. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. You cannot have things your way and make it into heaven. What did Jesus say in John 14, verse number 6? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He also said in Matthew 7, verse number 21, because he knew it would be a lot of imposters out there. Can I say it the way it is? He knew it would be a lot of hypocrites out there. He knew 
that on the judgment day that someone will make it. That's why he forewarned us. In Matthew 7 verse 21, out of love for us, he said specifically, not everybody that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father that's in heaven. Oh, amen, somebody. I know you don't like people to call names, but I'm going to call a name today. Huh? Oh. Man, we in a war. We ain't got time. To think about it this way. If the United States actually went to war with Russia, do you think we're going to call Vladimir Putin's name? <laughs> Yes! We're going to call his name and all his generals and everybody that served him. And we're not going to be scared to do it. Why? Because what? We at war. And when you at war, you just got to put some stuff on the table. Oh, amen, somebody. So just take your Jesus in the heart, Joel Osteen. Y'all better run as fast as you can. Huh? Love listening to T.D. Jakes. Great motivational speaker. But you better not listen to him for no salvation. Oh, amen, somebody. Huh? And since we have a lot of our brothers that are in Nigeria that listen to us right now, one of the great preachers over there, I'm talking about not great as in truthful, but well known, TV Joshua just died. Huge uh, charismatic preacher over there, but you better not listen to him for salvation. Amen, amen somebody. Amen. You better listen to Jesus. In Jesus alone. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. So what does his word say? Well, it's the New Testament. It's Romans 10 verse 17. It starts off, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. Not my word. Not anybody else's word. But what? The word of God. We stand on John 3 verse number 16. Where the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have what? Church everlasting life. Jesus also said in Luke 13, verse 3 and verse number 5 about the life we have to live. Okay? He says you got to repent or ye shall likewise perish. Huh? Peter repeated the same thing in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. See, when you have a ministry that's right, all you're doing is being a mockingbird of Jesus. In other words, you just said the same thing he said. So Peter said the same thing in Acts 2, 2 verse 38. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, amen, somebody. Y'all quit fooling folks and talking gibberish, talking about that's tongues. That ain't no tongues. That's just you making up stuff. <laughs> amen. Can I, can I take you somewhere real deep? A baby can talk in the type of tongues that they talking about. I saw you about time that. Oh, Y'all ain't ready for that. Y'all ain't ready for that. A baby talks like that. But when you know what a tongue is, you know that it means it's something you can understand. It's not something between you and God. How do I know that? Because that's chapter number two. When you look at chapter two, where they were really speaking in tongues, they were speaking in languages that people understood already in the earth. For a purpose. The purpose is in Mark 16, verse number 16 and 15, where Jesus said that you're going to preach the gospel to every nation. So in other words, in order to do that, he gave them the miraculous ability of speaking any language in the planet so that when you heard them, you understood that Jesus is the Son of God, your Lord and your Savior. Amen. Not no gibberish Amen. that nobody can understand. So when you're doing that, you are not speaking from the Holy Ghost. You're speaking from your own mouth. Because God didn't send nobody to speak a word that can't nobody understand. Amen. Right, when you look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 14 on the same topic, the Bible says that if you speak in a tongue that nobody else understands, you better, you better be able to interpret. What does a soya basanta mean? I don't know. <laughs> so how am I going to tell you? What it is. She ought to be able to point to what I just said. Oh, right. We are both dumbfounded. We've caused confusion. And so that means God can't be in it. Because God don't create confusion. He's a God of understanding. Huh? Who is the person of confusion? 
When you look at the parable of the seed and so forth, when God said the word goes out, as he compared it to a seed, that the birds came. And God compared those birds to what? Satan. Because it says when they don't understand something, that what? Satan comes in and takes away the word from their what? Heart. So that they cannot understand and make Jesus their Lord and Savior. That's what confusion is designed to do. It's the design to keep you from obeying the gospel. See, if we look at what the Bible says, when you actually have the Holy Ghost, can y'all go here with me for a minute? Wow. Acts 2 verse 38. It said what? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. How you going to talk in tongues? You ain't even got wet yet. Oh, amen, somebody. Because God said an order, didn't he? He said what? Repent first and, and be baptized in the name of Jesus. Then the Holy Ghost will be in your life. Amen, amen somebody. So you got some holy ghostless folks speaking tongues all the time. Oh, let me leave that alone. Y'all too, y'all too sophisticated. But I'm just trying to teach somebody here. I'm trying to teach. Okay. But let me get back to the plan of salvation. Okay. So I, I hope I've, I've shared enough doubt on the traditions of men that you have already understood. Because if you can't uh, trust them to talk about these simple things and do it right. How are you going to trust them with your heart? How are you going to trust them with your salvation? You can't get the simple stuff right. Oh, amen, somebody. There's no way you can get salvation right. Huh? How am I going to take my car to get an engine repaired and my mechanic can't change the tire? Man. Oh, amen, somebody. Let me even know. Y'all are too serious now. Nonetheless, we talked about three parts of the plan of salvation, right? First, you got to hear the word. You got to believe it concerning Jesus Christ being the Son of God, which means your Lord and Savior as well, right? you got to repent. That means to take on a Christian lifestyle and live without hypocrisy. We call that staying on the balance beam, right? In the message today. You have to confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's Romans 10, verse 9, verse number 10, where the Bible says, With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Didn't say just take Jesus in your heart. It said what? you got to say something about it. And that's called confession. Your best example in action is Acts chapter 8 with the Ethiopian eunuch, where he was required by the preacher. Remember, he said he wanted to be baptized. He had been taught Isaiah 53 about Jesus dying for him for his sins. And he said, as he looked at water, here is water. What does hinder me from being baptized? The preacher Philip said, you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. What did he say? Acts 8 verse 37, he said, I believe. That Jesus is the what? Son of God. Then what happened? They both went down into the watery grave of baptism. You can't change the story. You don't have the ability to change the commandments. You have to have faith. You have to repent. You must confess. And you got to do just like Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch and go down in the watery grave of baptism. It's right behind us. And God says there's an effect. There's a, a, a great and positive consequence that happens after you obey him by getting in the water. He said in Acts 22, verse number 16, he says, Why tarryest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. That's when God washes away your sins. That's when he looks at you differently. That's when he says, I have forgiven you and makes you his child. That's the other part. Galatians 3 verse 27, those that have been baptized have been baptized into Christ. Being into Christ is another way of the Bible saying you're in the church. In other words, it's like saying you're in the family of God. That's when you can call yourself a child of God. That's when you can call yourself a Christian because you've done what is required to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. If you don't get it now, the most uh, uh, obvious uh, two scriptures that tell you that baptism is necessary for your salvation. It's Mark 16, verse number 16, where Jesus says, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. First Peter chapter 3, verse number 21 says that baptism does save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. You see, this is where you can put your burdens down right now. I'm talking about the burden of guilt. Knowing that we all have messed up. 
Amen, somebody. You ought to be saying in your own heart, I messed up, but thank God, God cleaned me up. Amen, Amen somebody. It's just nothing but the truth. He said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The ways of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Romans 3.23, Romans 6, verse 23. So don't you want to get that guilt off of you? Don't you want to come and be sure of your salvation? What we do is we call our song leader up. We call it a song of invitation. And all we're going to do is give you an opportunity to come down that aisle. I'm going to take your confession. All I'm going to do is like Philip did. I'm going to ask you, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? And then we'll go down in that watery grave of baptism. And you'll come up and you'll come up rejoicing and so will we and so will heaven. Because now you have been reborn spiritually. You've been forgiven of your sins. You'll become a child of God. You'll be saved if you stay faithful unto death. Y'all saw that scripture earlier already, didn't you? Revelation 2 verse number 10 where the Bible says, Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a what? A crown of life. Amen. Folks, you don't understand how special this day is for you. Hmm? God has been waiting for you all this time. He doesn't have to give you an opportunity to be saved. Mm -mm. But he's waited for you all this time so that you can be saved here today. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. As you know, tomorrow's not promised to anybody. Amen, somebody. Look how many, many deaths we've had in a year just from coronavirus. What if something else, Corona 20 comes out, 21 actually, to go by the year that we don't even know about? All these variants that's coming out of the United Kingdom and India and other places, or it might be one that originated right here in the United States. And then we have a million people dead next year. You could be one of them. I'm not trying to be mean to you. I'm just trying to show you the urgency of salvation. This can't be something that you, you leave uh, up to chance, as we like to say, right? Make sure you close that gap today. Is that all right, y'all? All you got to do is when we call that song leader up is give your confession. We'll baptize you this very day. If you're a child of God that's walked uh, disorderly, if you fall off the balance beam, using our symbolism, God's still got grace and mercy there for you in Acts 8, 22 and 1 John 1, 7, verse number 10. He says what? Repent, confess your fault to him, and ask him to forgive you. He's going to do just that. So we're going to uh, stand at this moment. We're going to call out our song leader to lead us in the song invitation. We're calling you out to salvation as well if you haven't made Jesus your Lord and Savior. Won't you come back together, we said, and we say. Why do you wait, dear brother? Oh, why do you tarry so long? Your Savior is waiting to give you a place in his sanctified throne. Why not? Oh, why not? Oh, why not?
So if there's anybody out there to reiterate as uh, Brother Norwood has preached his heart out this morning to you. And uh, uh, you know we got a little thing with between him and us. He raised that left foot up. <laughs> <laughs> and when he's doing that, he's giving his all. So, uh, uh, you know, if you have been pricked in your heart to come up this morning and to be baptized, do so. Because you may not have another chance to do it once you walk out of the building. Amen. It's not promised to you. Amen. And with that, uh, we'll go to the Lord and pray over it. You know, after we pray over it, you still could come up. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and if you get home, you still could come back and we'll do it. Amen. If it's the Lord's will, let us all go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we just bow our heads this morning, Lord, thanking you for your goodness and your grace, Lord, that you uh, give to us as a free gift, God. We know that you uh, uh, you have unmerited favors uh, uh, to us, Lord, and we ask that you would just bless us this morning, Lord. Thank you for the new beginning of letting us congregate uh, inside the church building this morning, Lord. We know that you've always been there, Lord. You was there when you seen we need to be saved. And uh, you made uh, the sacrifice of sending your own son to shed his blood for us, Lord, on Calvary's cross for the whole world's sins, Lord. And uh, by him shedding his blood, Lord, uh, uh, the church came about. And you gave the church the work of saving us, Lord, and to do your work, Lord, and to stay in your favor, Lord, until the end of time. And we'll be with you, Lord, in the last day. Yes. If we would only do your will, Lord, and we are so grateful for that, Lord. We yes. know that you was always uh, there for us, Lord. Uh, we know that you was... Uh, uh, there when the Hebrew boys uh, uh, went in the fiery furnace, Lord, and we know that you was there for Daniel when he was in the lion's den, Lord, and we know that you was here, Lord, when uh, uh, the pandemic came, Lord, and it spread over the whole nations, Lord, and we know that you uh, uh, saved everyone when Nebuchadnezzar was taking the uh, children of Israel uh, into captivity, Lord. And we know that you are here today for yes. us also, Lord. And uh, we know that you are willing, we know that you are able to help us to overcome uh, uh, the boundaries that the devil tried to put in front of us to be with you all the time, Lord. And we ask that you would just continue to be with us during these trials time, because like Brother Noel would just preach to us, things change. Uh, the devil come at you in different ways. If he Amen. can't get you in this way, he's going to get you in that way, Lord. Amen. And we ask that you would just be with us, be able to uh, uh, enrich ourselves in your word, and be able to see the signs of the devil trying to overcome our lives, Lord, and uh, to turn us against you. And thank God that you got repentance, Lord, right in our eyes, right in front of us, Lord, that you gave us, Lord, to be with you. At any given moment, Lord, when we think we are overcome by the devil, we know that you give us repentance to turn the other way, Lord, and to serve you. Lord, we bow this morning on behalf of the sick and the children and everywhere, especially those here at the household of faith, Lord. And we pray this morning on behalf of the child's family, Lord, uh, uh, that's bereaved this morning. Yes. We ask that you will comfort this family, Lord, in each and every way, Lord. We ask that you will dispatch your Holy Spirit to them, Lord, and comfort them in their hours of sorrow. Lord, let them cling closer and closer and closer together uh, uh, as they love for one another. Draw them near to you, Lord. And we pray on behalf of uh, Sister Shakita Pearson and uh, Roger Pearson, Lord. Uh, we pray that everything will continue to go well 
in his favor. Lord, just bless him in each and every way. Uh, Sister Carol, Lord, bless her. Sister Bisa, bless her in each and every way. Lord, Sister Hooks, Brother Walker, Lord, Sister Walker, Lord, continue to bless him. Them. Uh, continue to bless uh, Brother Kenny Densmore, Lord, as he go through trying times with his health also. Lord, we ask that you will bless Sister Mitchell this morning, Lord. Bless her in a way, Lord, that you will continue to strengthen her, Lord. Sister Trinity this morning, continue to bless her. Brother Mitchell this morning, continue to bless him in each and every way. Uh, continue to bless uh, the ones uh, that's lost this morning, Lord. We pray that they come and ask, what must I do? For it's everlasting too late, Lord. We ask that you would just uh, uh, be with us here today, Lord, and uh, let us be uh, steadfast in your word, Lord, that you will continue to bless us. We know that you've blessed us during this pandemic, Lord. You was here for us, Lord, and you're still here for us, Lord. We ask that you continue to bless Brother Norwood, Lord, as he carry your message to us so dearly, Lord, in a way that's pleasing and acceptable unto you in its simplest form, Lord. And we also come praying, Lord, that the ones that went astray, Lord, by the wayside, Lord, that have left the church, Lord, we pray that you would just give them a new heart, Lord, and then they think about their salvation, Lord, and come back to the church for it's everlasting to late, Lord. For salvation lies in the church of Christ, and in the church of Christ only, Lord, we ask that they come back and work out their salvation in fear and trembling, Lord. And we also come praying for our visitors, Lord. Uh, we ask that you would just bless them in each and every way, Lord. Allow them to come back and visit us, Lord. And uh, uh, we will roll the red carpet out for them and continue uh, uh, to be a presence uh, with them in friendship, Lord, and in your word, in the truthful form that you gave us, Lord, and not waver from it. We pray that you would just also allow us, Lord, to uh, uh, be the people that you would want us to be. Let us all be religious-minded, Lord. Let us be able to look at your word before we make any decisions, Lord, that we need to make, Lord, uh, to go forward in this life, Lord, and always committing to you and do what you would have us to do accordingly. We pray uh, that when the last day comes, Lord, and you open the Lamb's Book of Life, Lord, we pray that you'll be able to uh, look at each and every one of us and say, well done, thy good and faithful service. And with that, uh, this is our petition this morning, Lord, we pray that you go with us, be with us. Keep us all from hurt, harm, and danger. These blessings we ask in your Son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's good to be with everyone this morning. I'm so thankful to the Lord for allowing us to be in the presence of one another without having to be in a park. Amen. Um, but we come down to this part of our service that is known as the collection. And uh, at this time, if you have not given your offering, which you have to give, please raise your hand. And one of the brothers will come to you uh, to collect your your offering. We have seven. Just keep your hand raised until we get to you. And as we uh, go through this process, you know, I, you know, uh, don't know what you're talking about being flexible. And, you know, having to get used to, you know, our new norm. Um, so this is going to be the way that we'll be giving 
for a while, you know. Uh, as you come in, we just ask that you place the place your offering in the box and be, you know, here on the side. Uh, also, if you do not receive the Lord's Supper this morning, and you need to get that, you can raise your hand for that as well if you need that. And we'll make sure that we get you one. We have some on the side over here in the overflow as well. But um, we are given a commandment to give, and even more than just the commandment of giving, we should be grateful for the opportunity to be able to give back to the Lord. When we consider the greatness of the Lord, all that he has done for us, uh, we should be extremely thankful and extremely willing to give back to him and to the church. Um, if we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2, we can read of how the Apostle Paul uh, stated that uh, not concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given the order to the church of Galatia, even so do you. Upon the first day of the week, let everyone you lay by him in store, that God has prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. Uh, also, please remember, too, that um, if you would like to give virtually, we're still doing that. Uh, the cash app option is still available. And our cash app handle is the dollar sign, followed by Heron Street, C-O-C. And you'll see a picture of the church. Um, this is an overflow section of the Bible. Um, the fellowship hall. Okay. All right, but at this time, let us give thanks for the collection that has been gathered. Big God, we thank you so much for the blessings that you have so richly showered upon us. We're thankful for our finances, and um, Lord, we just thank you for that little that we have. Lord, we're appreciative for our jobs that enable us to be able to receive funds to take care of our families. And um, Lord, we just pray that we'll always see the need um, and the pleasure in giving back to you. Yes. Lord, we ask that you will bless the collection that's been gathered, and we pray that it will be used in the widest manner possible for uh, our home church, but also for the spreading of the gospel abroad. It's in your son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Also, upon the first day of the week, we are commanded to, to partake of the Lord's Supper. And we have a scriptural reference of partaking of the Lord's Supper in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at the 23rd verse. And it reads, For I received of the Lord that which all started to live unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Now, once again, we come to you to say thank you. But we thank you so much for your daughter and son, Jesus, who died upon Calvary's cross for our sins. And we pray that as we partake of this bread, we represent his body. That we do so with our hearts and our minds focused upon the sacrifice of the Lord for us. It's in his name we pray. Amen. So took the cup when he had such saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthy, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, he doesn't drink a donation to himself, not deserving the Lord's body. For this calls men are weak and sickly among you, and men sleep. Let us pray. The God, we come to you once again saying thank you for your son Jesus and the sacrifice that he made on Calvary's cross for the whole world's sin. And we pray that as we partake of this fruit of the vine, that we will always see the need to think about son's sacrifice. There will always 
Let's keep it in the forefront of our minds, knowing that had he not died, we would be eternally lost. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we, uh, well, I better just tell you this while I got it on my mind. You know, we, we got a, a sinkhole over here. I say a sinkhole is washing out under the pipe or something has caused it to cause a hole to develop over there. We got it taped off and we want you to make sure your kids don't get near that. You don't want anybody to get hurt, you know. I've had a contractor look at what we need to do. But we hadn't made a decision as to what we were going to do. I hope it's not quite the way the contractor made it sound like, you know, not quite the way he said that he is or thinks that it is. Really, I've already talked with somebody at the city, or they got a project going on over here.